schools to demand more funding. We mean business this time, and that we, we are really serious about what we need for education. And tomorrow will be even bigger. Take this crowd, multiply it by five. Plus the calm before the chaos. Broncos country on pins and needles. Just one hour until the most important draft in years. Denver 7 starts right now. And tonight we have you covered on the first wave of teacher walkouts and the even bigger one to follow in just about 16 hours. Good evening, I'm Andrew Hill. And I'm Shannon Ogden. And for teachers, this is more than just a walkout, more than just a strike. Denver 7's Mark Stewart's been at the Capitol all day. Mark, they are pleading their case today. And Shannon, let's just look at the numbers. So far, 2,000 teachers showed up here today. Tomorrow, as many as 10,000. That includes teachers from Denver. They say this is not just about awareness. They want immediate action. Wearing red for Ed, Colorado teachers converged around the state capitol first thing this morning. This is what democracy looks like. With educators from Douglas and Jefferson counties dominating the crowd. I came out here today just to bring attention to our, the underfunding that's been going on in Colorado for years and years now. And we've got stuff falling apart in our schools and we're ready to fix it and make a change for our kids. Red for Teachers at the Capitol instead of their classrooms, sharing personal stories and struggles. My cost of living in my apartment went up $145 this year. I put in 13 hour days, and I just don't think it's right that a single teacher as myself is barely making it when I'm making so many impact on kids' lives every single day. Difficult dilemmas to convince lawmakers to help improve teacher shortages, salaries, and classroom supplies. They hope they will find funds to pay back $6 billion promised in an amendment passed more than a decade ago. Money, teachers say, would give districts more flexibility. This is the line to get into the state capitol. Teachers say besides a protest, they hope face-to-face, one-on-one meetings with lawmakers will prompt change. A real-life civics lesson for these teachers, showing their presence and talking to decision makers. I think getting that opportunity to share a story is always valuable. Being here in person, what message does it send as opposed to a phone call or an email? that we mean it. We mean business this time, and that we, we are really serious about what we need for education. And the teachers here aren't alone. We found this mom and her son showing their support. We got to do better. Um, it, you know, our kids are our future, and we're raising the next generation of kids here. So many people here and lawmakers couldn't help but ignore the large crowds. In fact, we saw the fire marshal here making several rounds. The key, they say, is not so many so much about the number of people in the Capitol. They just want to make sure people can flow through in and out. As far as road closures, nothing that we noticed today. It's something, though, that DPD is keeping watch on, especially with the perhaps record setting crowd we could see tomorrow. We're live at the state Capitol tonight. Mark Stewart. Denver 7. Yeah, definitely one busy place out there. Thank you, Mark. And today, as teachers protested outside the Capitol, lawmakers voted inside to address the teacher shortage. The House just passed its sixth bill, which creates grant money to retain teachers through child care, housing, or other incentives. Other bills in the package would create a mentoring program and tuition assistance for college students who commit to teach in our state after graduation. And the teachers walking out appears to have the backing of their bosses. Just today, a group of 16 superintendents released their own statement about the walkout saying their teachers deserve to be heard. In the statement, they were quick to point out that Colorado ranks 42nd in per pupil funding. But the reality is the districts have a big role in this funding fight. Take Denver, for instance. The district gets 10% of its funding from the federal government, another 28% from the state, and then the rest, 62% from local sources. And Denver 7 investigative reporter Jace Larson is doing the math so you understand just how much is being spent on your child and where all that money goes. Hey guys, here's how that money is spent. In Colorado, on average, we spend about $9,960 per student each year. Better than half of that goes to what's called instruction. That's mostly teacher salaries. $932 goes to operations and maintenance. $842 goes to a category that mostly includes principal and superintendent salaries. And then $337 goes to food services and about the same for transportation. 267 goes to activities and athletics. If you want to do a deeper dive into these numbers, I've put the whole breakdown on the Denver 7 app. Just look for this story. In Denver, Jace Larson, Denver 7. And now organizers of tomorrow's protests anticipate a crowd five times the size of today's. Which also means five times as many families scrambling to come up with childcare for tomorrow. And unlike the protections afforded to teachers who are walking out, 
There are no strong laws to help protect working parents who may have to call in as a result. FMLA is only for rare emergencies and severe illness. Your only option is to work with your employer.